the big finish tonight. Brand new evidence that life on Earth may have come from outer space. Ooh, the faith-based community is squirreling on this one tonight. They're not going to like it. Now, there is more likely than ever a comet or meteor brought the building blocks to life to our planet. That's what scientists are saying. Just imagine something as simple as a meteor disintegrating over Russia. But instead of a few weeks ago, how about billions and billions of years ago? I still love that videotape. Scientists from the University of California created a mini comet in a lab and exposed it to conditions similar to outer space, such as a temperature of minus 442 degrees Fahrenheit. It got that cold in Fargo a couple of times. But anyway, just like our Milky Way galaxy, scientists reproduced the effects of cosmic rays. The experiment created amino acids, and if amino acids traveled to Earth on a meteor, they might have changed uh, into more complex molecules here on Earth. Uh, on a related note, four more asteroids passed by Earth within the past week. Turning tonight, we are going to go to Derek Pitts. He is the chief astronomer at Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. He has uh, been designated by NASA as an astrobiology ambassador. Mr. Pitts, good to have you back with us tonight. Thank you very much for having me on, Ed. You bet. Now, explain to us what these scientists did. What did they do and what did they find? Well, the thought here is that it's possible that perhaps the building blocks of life came to this, pl this planet for some, from someplace else in the galaxy or around the universe. And the way that they get to this is that astronomers have been able to identify organic compounds elsewhere around the galaxy. They use telescopes to analyze star clusters and clouds of star material, and they find these organic compounds already existing. So this means that they've been created by some astronomical process. Now the question is, could some of those organic compounds that are the building blocks for the amino acids that form life here on this planet, could they have been transported somehow from those distant locations to this planet. Turns out that perhaps a vehicle may have been either a comet or a meteor or an asteroid that has somehow collected this material, brought it to Earth, and it's been able to develop and prosper here. So that's the idea of what the possibility could be. What is the significance of the temperature? Well, the significance of the temperature is that it simulates what the space environment is like. And there are a couple of things that go with this, Ed. One of them is a very important piece, and that is the space environment itself. Is it possible that the organic molecules that are created, or the organic compounds, can survive in space? Now, we have to talk about the temperatures being so incredibly low. You know, 440 degrees below zero, that's about as cold as anything can possibly be. And we also have to remember that these organic compounds have to be able to survive a very long journey, maybe multiple millions of years to come from someplace across the galaxy. And they also then have to be able to withstand the very, very harsh radiation environment of space as well. So if you put all of these things together, that then adds up to the possibility that this could happen. But we also have to ask this other question. Once they get here, is the environment the proper environment for them to develop and propagate into something else? Life coming uh, to Earth from a meteor has, has always been a theory that's been out there, but this new experiment gives it a little bit more weight, doesn't it? It does give it more weight because what it does is it not only identifies a vehicle that could bring the organic compounds to the planet, but it also shows that they could not only have developed in space, but that the cosmic radiation in space is a catalyst for making these elements come together to create these building blocks of the amino acids. So we're now sort of putting this piece together with another piece together that makes it possible for us to create, let's say, a scenario sure. that could possibly have caused this to happen. And, and another uh, recent study says that um, it's fairly common for both uh, comets and, and, and planets to exist together around other stars. Uh, what's the significance of that? 
Well, there's a couple of significances that, a couple of pieces that are significant there, Ed. It is that, number one, we are now allowing for the possibility that there are many more planets in our galaxy than we ever thought of before. In fact, it now seems unusual to consider a, a star without planets. Now, the comets and the planets together everywhere around the galaxy means there are many more chances for the possibility of these organic molecules to be delivered to another planetary environment. And in that way, perhaps uh, providing some material that could develop on other planets into more complex uh, organic materials that might eventually uh, develop into life. We haven't seen anything like that yet, but it at least opens the possibility to uh, a, a much more uh, a broadly, a broad, much broader possibility for this kind of development to take place other than, than Earth. That is, if we can find a suitable location. Is, uh, quickly, is our research getting better? I mean, with these with these telescopes that are just just fabulous technology. I mean, how far have we come in the last five, ten years with that? Oh, my goodness, the the advances that have been made with uh, astronomical telescopes over the last two decades are like the difference between uh, using Galileo's telescope one day and using Hubble telescope wow. today. It's been an amazing achievement. All right, Derek Pitts, great to have you with us. Always to talk about this stuff. Thanks so much.